Right then, we're going to play some Run 8. We should be live by now. I've got Michael, the disembodied voice, and good morning to Michael, and good morning to Chris as well. Now, Chris is piling the pressure on, because pretty sure Chris is a real train driver. But anyway, that's cool. Ah, why can't I see the rail driver? Oh, I'm, I'm organised today. Let me just move some shit, and then I can turn the rail driver camera on. Hopefully it'll be vaguely aligned. Oh, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So this morning we're doing Run 8. Run 8 is just a tiny bit different to other games in that it really is a simulator. Now, it's graphics, and I've started here deliberately. We're in Bakersfield Yard in California. Um, well, the I think it's called SJ, SJW or something, Yard, which is in front of Bakersfield. But... Um, I wanted to start here deliberately. This is where the train spawns. And you can already see there's a massive gap in the scenery where it's just white. Get used to that with Run 8. It's pretty common. And um, anti-aliasing. No, I don't think these people have actually heard of anti-aliasing. So hopefully my voice is going out on the chat. Uh, you know what we don't have? We don't have game sound going out on the chat. Let me just fix that because... This hideous yep. game can't have its sound routed. So I need to change my sound routing, which means every little Windows noise will also happen. All right, now hopefully we've got game sound now. Hopefully you're hearing it go spit, spit, spit every now and again. Let me just watch the meter and see if it does. Of course, the train's not going to do it now. There it goes. Okay, we have game sound. Good. All right, so... What we're going to be running is a thing called... Oh, look, I must be popular enough. I've got a spammer. Yay! Oh, well, let's just... Uh... Do, 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 do. Let's just report you as unwanted commercial content or spam. And... Oh, so after I report them, they disappear, so I can't give them a timeout. That's clever. Well done, YouTube. Next time I'm just going to throw them out. All right. This is the same person from the last time. Uh, it's a company, and they have thousands and thousands and thousands of accounts. And according to the YouTube Creator Forum, they are fighting a bit of a war with YouTube because they create accounts faster than YouTube can kill them. That's okay. And that text means something to someone. It's probably a drug deal or something. But anyway, that's fine. So just introducing ourselves to Run 8 a little bit. I also have a thing called the External Dispatcher. Let me make that a little bit bigger so it's a bit easier to read and where are we on this map we're not actually on this map i don't think uh no not that map let's go back this way hmm, no they were anywhere on this map no 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 <laughs> there's too many maps ah uh, that's the yard at the other end, this is Basto, which is probably the right yard, but we're not quite in the right place. Now, where is the thing that I actually want to get to? Maybe it's that one, row one. Hmm. This is the map. So we're currently in the, I know you can't see my mouse pointer, but if you look in the top left quadrant, there's Bakersfield at the top. We're up there. We're sitting in a yard and we're waiting to go out. We're going to be running across the line towards the right, but not very far because we're a local. Anyway, uh, I'll get rid of this map in a moment. I'm not going to play Dispatcher while we're doing this, but it is a, an opportunity for people who play this game is that you can drive and ignore the dispatch and ignore the fact that everyone is stopped at red signals absolutely everywhere except down here where there's a few trains moving um, or you can drive and dispatch and there's you can either use the external dispatcher like I do which is a third party thing it's not from the people that made run 8 or you can um, use run 8's internal dispatcher the internal dispatcher's route information is probably a little more reliable than the external one but um, the external one's a little bit easier because you can put it on another monitor. And I believe you can do that with Run 8s now, but I haven't tried. 
But anyway, I will hide the dispatcher now because we're going to be ignoring it because running a local and doing that's just too hard. So just to give you an idea, so this this one, ah, hello Z Freak. Yes, you've been wanting to do 1.8. I believe this stream's actually for you. So, uh, ooh. Now, there's a few things I wanted to show you. I'll put away my PZB cheat sheet. I don't need that today. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to read this. Oh, look, that's not too bad. You don't need to see the whole lot. Um, excuse my scrawl on how to fix a, a PCS reset. But you can see that almost every key does stuff. And the scary keys, they do like six things. Like left shift, right shift, control, alt, they all do different things. Now, run eight's a bit of a nuisance for that, and the whole keyboard is like that. So if you just randomly type stuff, well, good luck to you. <laughs> it's just going to get really interesting really fast. Now, the other thing we've got is run eight gives you switch lists. So if I actually, let me bring it up in the game. If I can, it is on the L key if I remember correctly, and it will be purple, which is right control. So it tells you randomly type stuff, things happen. Ah, okay, so here's our switch list. And these are the cars that we have to set out, pick up, sorry. And these are the cars that we have to set out. Now they're already in this train, um, just for random, plus an extra one that's there for no really apparent reason, but that's okay. Ah, you know, you grew up in Fresno. That's cool. I've visited Fresno a couple of times, but I, um, and I've lived in Oakland and Berkeley, and I've worked all over the Bay Area. So, not that familiar with Fresno apart from the fact I've been there, and I remember it was hot. A bit like us yesterday. We got to 47 degrees yesterday. It was just a little bit warm. That's 47 degrees Celsius. What is that in the old money? About 100 and, 110? Somewhere between 110 and 120. Let me check that out. Fahrenheit would be 116. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit warm. 116. There we go. So it did get just a little bit warm. So you can export your switch lists, which I do, and I scribble all over them. But the other thing that I tend to do with these sort of runs, and this might be a bit hard to read, is um, I'm actually going to reorder the train, and this is the order I'm going to put it in before we leave the yard, because the order they give it to you is a bit shit, to be honest. And then I work out all of my moves of what I'm going to do. That might seem a little bit boring, and you can certainly do it on the fly. You don't have to do that. But um, it just adds an element of realism because a train crew, before they take their train out, they're going to inspect it, and then they're going to sit in the office, and they're going to work all this stuff out if it hasn't been worked out for them. So let's just go over here. Now, run eight, you can, if you so choose to, and I'll note, you'll note my cars are unliveried, but I insist on liveries for locos, so I buy livery packs for locos. These are GP40s. You'll see some other ones that aren't liveried. Now, in Run 8, you can go through and you can set up everything manually. You can do absolutely everything. Chris was at minus 33, which is minus 27 yesterday. That's a little cool, Chris. Just a little cool. Okay, so you can do everything the right way and that you can start each locomotive and you can set all of your angle cocks and you can make sure all everything's set up properly. You can make sure that your multiple units are all set up manually and you can set up your end of train device manually or you can just do this, auto start everything. Okay, so that's done. Now, if we wander down here and have a little look at our train, remember how to walk. That sounds funny, doesn't it? I have to remember how to walk. Now, I'm just going to turn down my headphones, because if I don't, I'm going to start screaming at you, and no one needs that. All right. It means I can't hear the game all that well. All of the cars have numbers, so if I turn that on... And I want left control and F8, I think, from memory. There we go. So this numbers appeared above the car and so on down the train. 
it can get a little bit confusing in a big yard because you get numbers bloody everywhere and you'll see while we're shunting that you get numbers bloody everywhere but you get kind of used to it um, you can also turn on all your milepost markers and things like that as well that gets just a tiny bit scary so we don't need to in this one because it's a short run now in games like TSW2 you might get a route that people think is big I'm just going to set my route all the way out of the yard but I am going to do some shunting before we go um, you might think your route is big if it's like 50 or 60 miles long these routes in run 8 are massive I can't say I know exactly how big they are because I've never really looked but I know that you can drive for 12 hours and you do not reach the end all right, this switch is lined appropriately. Good. And this one is lined appropriately. This is actually kind of unusual in run eight. Oh, here we go. Here's one that's not. And we just click. You click on the base and they flip. And unlike Train Sim World 2, the indicator is always right for the base. Now, I'm going to be a little bit rude here. Because we need to cross onto the... Uh, is it the north track? It's the other thing I should show you. Run 8 comes with maps. And you have no choice but to print them all. So we are going to be going along... Excuse me, whacking the microphone. We're going to be going along this way. And we're going to be shunting at all of these industries up here. And you have no choice to print the maps because, well, as far as I know, apart from running the local dispatcher, which does not have the resolution of a proper map, you can't actually see the map in the game. Joy. <laughs> but I suppose that's a little bit realistic, isn't it? And the whole point of Run 8 is that it's really realistic. Now, what I'm doing right now is really rude because I'm aligning points out of the yard across the south track to the north track, which means all these signals are going to go to stop. But I don't care. And then I'm going to go back to the yard and I'm going to do some shunting. So you can see here, these are locos I don't have liveries for. So these are SD40s probably because I've never bothered buying liveries for them. They just look like that. They either, they either say Run 8 or Run 8 Western when you don't have liveries. Or they'll say Run 8 A-Line or they will say, I think, Run 8 New York for the Amtrak stuff if you don't have Amtrak liveries. I do have the Amtrak liveries. Look how well these houses are modelled. Let's just take a bit of a look. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that resolution. That's just like an 80s game. Oh, wait. Hmm. Anyway, so people who complain in Transim World, for example, that there's a floating vehicle, well, here they don't even have pumped up tyres. <laughs> and they're just blobs. <laughs> Everything's just a blob in this game. So, But the trains are actually modelled quite nicely. And the trains themselves look okay in graphics wise where they excel is sound the locomotives sound good um, and the games the game itself so the carriages sound good you get all the creaks and groans of the rubber blocks and the suspension and things like that which is kind of cool and the freak has asked do i play on any of the big servers no but i do play on one with a few friends from um, the preserve railway i'm on and we do our best to make each other's lives miserable to be honest with you <laughs> when we play uh, the big servers i suppose it's worth chatting about before we move on the big servers um are a little bit interesting those people are so serious it's a bit like uh, our flight simulator is a good example when flight simulator when you join an atc server extremely and you start playing and you, you're flying if you do something that air traffic control don't like well they make you a little bit miserable and sad and they probably throw you out and i have to say the run out goes are a lot like that if you don't play by the rule book you're out and you know that's just not me i like to muck around so i do and it gets me in trouble that's okay all right so at the moment looking at our list we have a bunch of cars in our train let me go back to the original switch list. So, is that the one I want? It is not the one I want. Yes, it is. All right. So, in our original switch list that comes with the game, 
comes out and you, you export these things into Excel spreadsheets, sadly enough. Um, you can see there's a position, oops, over there, there's a position column and that's the order that the things are in right now. Now, you can certainly run out in this order and you can take them out, but some of the carriages are at the wrong end of the train if you do that for the, the shunting later on. So I'm just going to reposition stuff just slightly and I want to, so we've got set out for King Pack Potato, Consolidated Grain Corp. Uh, we've got a car that's coming with us and going back. Well, who knows why that's there? But I have noticed if you don't take it out and bring it back, the game gets sad. That's okay. And then we've got some cars for advanced drainage. Now, if we look at our map... I'll just drop one on the floor. This might be a little bit hard to see, but we're... Our first set outs are here, and then our next set outs are here, and then we start setting some out here, and I've got to go that way, and then there, and then there. But the cars aren't in that order. That's okay. Now normally I just take them out this way. Whatever, whatever order the game gives to me, I just take them out. But today I'm actually going to shunt them a little bit, and this could, could go really badly, because this means it's never been the way I've played before. So, bear with me, <laughs> we'll see what happens. So what I want to do is I want to reorder these cars so all of my King Pack Potato ones are at the front. And I want the Consolidated Grain Corp, which is this car, and the one that I'm just taking out and taking back, which is the next one along, at the back. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go wandering down the train. And this will introduce us to a couple of the other important things about run eight as well which you will see so we've got two cars at the back there the two covered hoppers they're going to advanced drainage and this one which is our route train is going to let me just check that number seven nine oh six Actually, this one's going to Consolidated Green. Do you know the bloody things put them in the right order today? Well, how about that? Isn't that funny? Well, I don't have to shunt them. Normally, they're not in this order. <laughs> okay. Forget I said a thing. All right, let's just check all the others. So we've got 536, which is going to King Pack Potato. We've got 853 which is going to King Pack Potato. 807, which is also going to King Pack Potato. 126, also King Pack Potato. 475, which isn't going to anybody. It's coming back. And 893 is going to King Pack Potato. Well, that's annoying. What's that one doing there? Between the ones that I want. I reckon. Yeah, you know, I've never noticed before. Maybe the game puts them in a random order. Anyway, we are going to shunt because we're going to take that. And we're going to get rid of it. Alright. So, we're in a yard. A handbrake's applied anyway, so that's fine. We're going to close our angle, angle cock. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that one open because I, I want you to hear it. We're going to close this one though. Otherwise, I'll dump the air out of my the rest of my train. I'm going to open the coupler up. And I haven't actually been in the cab yet, so I need to go up here at least once. Uh, no, they're, they're not reliably on the side of the cars, sadly. Let's just get in here and... F 11, why didn't you take me in there? Oh, because it's left shift F 11. Of course. Right. Good. All right. Now that we've been in here once, we'll be able to control the train. So let's just prove that we can. So we've got independent handle moves. That one moves. That's good. We have got our park brake on, which is boring. Because guess what? There is no way to take the park brake off from inside the train. And notice TSW2 players, the flow gauge works. Radio works in this too, and so does this. And you can set up proper 
MUs. Um, sadly, no, Chris, no operating lever to do the park brake. So what you actually have to be able to do is you go back to the ground, which is... Right, back to the ground. Except I'm not on the ground. I have somehow managed to get onto the outside of the train. I'm doing great here. Why can't I get onto the ground? This is really annoying. Okay. Try again. Ah, gotcha. All right. The only way you can get the park brake off... It's getting a bit further away from the train. Come on. Is to... Release it. Isn't that sad? But anyway, that's okay. We'll forgive them a little bit, maybe. Uh, left control. Engineer view. Okay. Ah, we still have a park brake on. That's sad. All right. Let's set the other things up. Headlights. Is the horn going to work today? Yes. Okay. Now, the other thing I want is the right HUD. I don't want that HUD. I want the other HUD. I want the HUD that's got my train stuff in it. Oh, you can tell I don't play Run 8 enough, can't you? Where is my HUD commands? There it is. Okay. So, it's left shift Z. So, they're different HUDs we've got. So, this one's telling me about the train itself what's happening. This is the one I'm going to play with. This is the one that tells me a little bit about my load. So how long it is, how many axles I've got, things like that. This is pretty handy when you run over the detectors because the detectors um, do actually do things properly. Um, this is the strain so that easy your locomotives or engines and the little equal signs are the strain on your couplers and they change colours and if they go red you break them. So you've got to be a little bit careful with your train handling in this. And this one signals. Again, on this run I don't care, but I often do have this one up when I'm driving. But I'm going to be using this one. Because when I'm shunting outside the train, I need to know what notch I'm in and I need to know what I've done with the brakes because you can't see it, obviously. So hopefully, 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 will the brake release when I start moving... No, of course not. So let's go back to the ground view. Let's use the cheat key. So we've just pulled off the back of the train down there. And I'm just going to go back to the ground view. There you go. I used the cheat key. There's two cheat keys, F5 and F7. F5 fixes anything you need to move, and F7 fixes all the brakes so they're proper. And I'm obviously on a gradient here because I'm slowing down, and my HUD has changed again. Thanks, HUD. What's that HUD? going to make it past those points and we lived a bit more juice. Just a little bit. And that's enough. Just give it a little bit of break there. And that's the other thing about brakes, is you know, so I give it a little bit of brake and the train's still going. It's because it's realistic. Although when it's that short, it probably would actually stop quicker, I would think. Into reverse now. Can you ride the cars? Yes, you can. Let's go and do that. So you get close to a ladder and you do F11, attach point change two. 
might help if I have my cursor on the right screen. Why isn't it doing it though? Maybe I'm not close enough. You can't get much closer than that. I don't know why it won't let me on this one. It should. But it's not. Okay. You can normally ride the cars. Back we go. We'll have to ride the cars later when we're shunting. I didn't get a notch. Brakes are still coming off. Air is still moving. And you can hear the brakes squealing because they haven't come off on the cars properly yet. Mouse control in this game is hideous. down here so he's not in foul anymore because I'm going to do something silly and I'm going to leave this car here because I don't want it I don't need to take it anywhere no you don't need it yeah I'm just going to double check that it's not on my switch list it is not so there we will Apply the handbrake, close the ankle cock. If you don't remember to close the ankle cock on the train, part of the train with the locomotives, and you cause PCS to pop, it's a proper procedure. Wait, did I not open the coupler? Oh, there's too much strain on the coupler. Okay. Remember I told you this thing was a bit realistic, so we're just going to back up a bit. Obviously, we're giving appropriate hand signals or radio signals to our driver. Okay, I'm going to open the coupler now. And just to be safe, I'm going to open both. Uh, the car number is coloured red. Does that mean it's not in your switch list? Yes, that's the deal with. And I'll go back into forwards. I'll hear it pop in a moment. bit of power. I wonder if it'll let us ride this one. We'll try it when we're stopped. You can't get it on and off when you're moving, it won't let you. Just flip these over and I'll try and jump on it and see what happens. Did you put the handbrake on? Yes, I did, of that car down there. Otherwise, one of the other interesting things about this game, and I've noticed TSW2 occasionally lets cars roll away. On Clinchfield, for example, it does. But most of the Just time... Yeah, most of the time, if you leave a brake... Ah! It works on this car. I'm allowed up here. Um, most of the time, if you don't apply a handbrake in this game and you're not on the level, the car will roll away. Or it'll follow you and crash into you. That's always a bit amusing. All right, just a little bit too much power there. So I'm just watching our speed up on the HUD. Got a little bit of drag happening, I think, because I'm pretty sure I'm going downhill here, but it keeps slowing me down. So possibly I have not released a brake or something somewhere, maybe on this car. I can't do that when I'm attached to it. It's okay. Yeah, that's correct, Chris. The cars actually, because the air dumps, they do in fact go into emergency. Which is what they should do. You know, Westinghouse air brakes. Well, currently Webco air brakes, but that's what should happen. They should go pop. Yeah, I'm a bit quick. If I hit this hard, I'm going to break couplers. 
let's use the independent brake because that slows you down really quickly because I've only got four locos on and this one car and I'll show you the other bit that's just a little bit realistic when I get these hooked up okay notice that wax the cars which is kind of cool let's get back onto the ground now at the moment we've got this one it's ankle cocks open this one's ankle cocks closed if I just whack that into open the PCS valve will go in the train because it will think it's gone into emergency so you have to go partially open and then you watch your air movement the CFM up in the up in the hut up there when that settles down a bit because it's pumping up the train again when that settles down a bit and gets down into about the high 20s is generally okay so we're there now I can open the clock completely and hopefully PCS won't go in the, in the loco. Alright, so we should now have a train that's exactly what we need. So let's go and get in the cab. So there's no automated dispatcher in this thing. You are the dispatcher. And I want to... Okay. And we did not pop the PCS, so I'm happy. Very happy. Alright, into forwards. Our brakes should be off. We've got 89 pounds on the back on the little TransLink thing up here. We have got an end of train device on the back. We could actually pop down and have a look at that, I suppose. Because it can be important. Let's go have a look down the back of the train. So the, this is the end of train device. Uh, they don't flash, sadly. It'd be kind of cool if they did, but they don't. You can put these on manually or you can let the game do it either way. All right, so back to the engineer view. Should be able to just jump back up there. I can, good. Brakes are off, we've got no air movement, so we can now leave the yard. Now, if you play run eight, you need to be a little bit careful on the notches. This train's very short. I probably wouldn't actually break it. But if you go straight to notch eight on a long train, you'll basically just pull the couplers off your loco. Um, now, we won't be doing it in this demo. Just roll down because we're getting just a tad fast for the yard. Um, we won't be doing it in this particular run through today, but uh, you've got proper DPUs on this thing and you can fence your DPUs and you can have some powering and some braking and it's good fun. So if you play some of the big long runs through the mountains, you'll have to do that because if you don't do that, you'll die. Dying in this game is very unceremonious. You just do. And it just says, oh, I'm sorry, you're dead. They don't crash and burn. So I'd let you hear all of the nice noises over the joints then. Now, how do you know where you um, are in this game? Well, that's interesting. Uh, you can cheat and use the HUD that tells you what milepost you're up to. 
you can watch out for the mileposts, but the graphics is so shit that it's a bit hard to tell. But the other thing that you can do, and it's helpful, um, the signals that are at a particular milepost, so I don't know if you can actually see that. That's a signal, they have a milepost number on them, so if you count the signals, you'll be okay. The other way to know it is these red things. These are detectors, and they talk to you. And it actually tells you, and it says milepost 318.8, which is really, really, really helpful. So a bit like a real cab, you've got to keep all this paper shit everywhere. Yes, I just looking at Michael's comment there, um, where TSW should have more things like this. Um, yes, but I think it needs to be in, I don't know, a realistic mode, a hard mode, a serious mode. If you want to be American train like a hogger, um, not in the normal game. Because at the moment, when I watch people who have never played train sim and don't know anything about trains try and play it on their streams, they, a lot of them can't get the train to move at all, especially if they go on German trains. There's nothing quite like sitting in an ice train and just having it yell at you in German because you haven't released the park brake. And who knows what the hell it wants because it's yelling at you in German. No subtitles, not helpful. So adding this extra functionality would be awesome. It, it would take it to the next level as a simulator and I'd really enjoy playing it. But I think a beginner would hate it. You need to work yourself up to this sort of thing. Now, um, Chris's comment that this game could be a whole lot more interactive, yeah, it could. Um, you can actually move the controls with your mouse, but there's no indication whatsoever that on which controls you can and which controls you can't. Um, you can't open windows or anything like that. You can in Run 8, I mean, TSW. Uh, sunshades don't do anything. So they've got a lot right, but they've got a lot wrong too. Uh, have we got a road crossing coming up? Not too far. So there's signal 3166, so I can find that on the map. Yeah, proper functioning radio would be nice, but in TSW they um, cheated and used that for controlling the other locos. The other thing you can do in here is change your field of view, which is nice. I wish you could do that in TSW. That would be cool. I usually actually drive a bit like this because I want to see what's happening and I want to be able to read stuff that's on the side of the track, even though it's a bit tough in this game to do that. Um, you'll notice they don't even bother with things like wires. It's like, wires? What wires? What are wires for? Even massive ones. Now, the other thing I do with this game, I'm not running it at the moment, so the radio that you can hear is, um, is actually this game that's doing it. But the other thing I do is I use railroadradio.net. You have to join it, which is a bit sad but that's okay, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, and then you can listen to real train radios from quite a bit of the US, not all of it, but quite a bit of it, and around Canada. So around here, we would listen to uh, probably that one. West Sacramento is probably the closest to where we are. So you can listen to that one. Um, potentially Central Valley would also work for this one. So there, there's plenty that you can listen to. And it just adds a little bit of extra spice. For TSW, functioning radio would be cool because you could use it to actually talk to your dispatcher. One of the uh, TSW games does talk to you. Sandpatch Grade has got some radio traffic, I think. 
I don't think any of the others do though. But it's just, it's like this one, it's just 10 things that run in rotation. And did you hear Nat the other day called it on stream Sandpit? I thought that was kind of funny. Look at those magnificently modelled orange trees, they're so good! I'm sorry, did my sarcasm get out again? Mm, sorry. But the train's cool. And you can read all the stuff that you need to be able to read. So the speed, nice and crisp. Things like the air on the end of train, nice and crisp. The gauges themselves, the background's not that crisp, but the needles are good. But if you need to be able to read it, you can read it. Oh yeah, awesome graphics. And they don't care at all. <laughs> Do not care about the graphics in this game. Although I did notice between Run 8 Original and Run 8 V2, which is the one I'm running. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's two guys. Run 8, by the way. It's not some massive organisation gaming company. There's one guy that does Western and there's one guy that does Eastern. I'm pretty sure it's just two. And the Eastern guys, I think they make the Florida, um, so A-Line and Selkirk for New York with the Amtrak stuff. Um, and there's the guy on the other side of the world who does um, Mahovi and all the other bits that you can buy. And you buy everything in this. You have to buy the liveries for your carriages. You have to buy liveries for your locomotives. You get a few in the game, but not a lot. We're not too far away from where we want to be, I think. So that's our second road crossing, which should have been Vineland Drive, so we should hear a detector shortly. Now the radio in this does have a purpose when you're playing on a multiplayer server because the radio is alive on a multiplayer server. Yep, I've just been through the detector or I will hear the for the end of my train shortly. to be sorry about mate so we did hear our detector then now at the risk of stuffing this up because I'm pretty close to where I want to stop if we change the HUD again and have a look at forty eight axles there we go now I've never heard a defector actually give a bad car or a hot axle or a hot um, axle box or anything like that. But I've heard other people talk about it. It's never done it to me. So I don't know if it's real or not. And now we're coming up on a road crossing that's not actually marked on the map. Andy. No, in fact... Wasn't paying attention. I'm going to stop on the road crossing or right before it, one or the other. Right on it, perfect. 
because I need to get out. Did you notice the train was rolling back then? As the couple of slack went away? Because I need to set some switches. So we'll just leave the motorists sitting there. They'll enjoy their day, surely. Looks like these ones are good enough. That's good. Let's do a quick run up to the ones up here. So these are the first cars that we have to pick up. And naturally they're all separated, so we have to put them together. That's okay. That's four, five, six, and there's seven cars here today. And I have to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm not going to bother checking car numbers because there's only seven cars here. I just want to quickly run up here and make sure this switch is set right. That's fine. And let's just check the last one up here. That one is set for the straight as well, which is perfect. That's what we need. I'll just come up and check this one. Even though I can see it from here, it's already fine because it's green. I like to make sure because I'm anal retentive. All right, good stuff. Now, in theory, we can just pop back to our train. Maybe. Well, ah. How far down did we take the brakes at the back? Not far at all. So we can probably move. My Christmas was uh, quite good, Aiden. Despite COVID, for the second year in a row, we actually had a family Christmas. This year we had less people turn up because there's always things in families. I won't go into details, obviously, but there's things. How was yours? How was everybody else's New Year, in fact? Happy New Year to everybody. It is the second day of the year for me. I think it's the first day of the year for most of you. Now, there's multiple ways that you can yep. do your first day hunting. of the year. Is you can do you can manage your train any way you want in this game. It doesn't care. It doesn't check. It's up to you whether you finish a scenario or not. The game doesn't care. It's all on you. Now I'm pulling ahead a little bit here and I am actually going to block this road crossing and I want some honking, naughty. Because we are dropping some cars here. Uh, five of them. That should be about enough, I think. So Aiden just says every new year his dad and I blow a train horn that we got from his dad, so that's always fun. You know, that sounds like something I would do. When I lived in Emerald, which is a well, was a country town these days, it's a suburb of Melbourne. Now I live in a, a suburb. Um, when I lived there, I had a steam whistle and I used to crank up a boiler to run the steam whistle for New Year's just to give people the shits. But the cars that we want to drop here are... So one, two, six, eight, nine, three. You're actually not on my list. You want to go to Consolidated Grain. Now that's interesting because that's changed since we were in the yard, but that's okay. So we've got this one on the wrong end of the train now, but that's fine. We will just deal with it. 
So we've got 126, which is definitely going here. Just looking at my switch list. We should have 807, which we do, which is coming here. And we have 853, which is also here. 536, which is also here, I think. Or not. And we have 006, which is here. Good. Okay, so we come down the train. Now, importantly, and break. And break. And I'm going to close that because I actually want to keep the air. Close that. I'm going to open the coupler and pull ahead a little. You can hear it squealing a bit because the brakes are on. Over release now. And in your walking around things, there's walk, run, and run more. So now in run more. And you're getting a bit quick. Yes, I'm naughty, I know. I'm not, not only am I naughty for um, leaving those cars there with air in them, but uh, I'm also naughty because I left the switch aligned for the main line to come into this loop that we're in. That is also a little bit naughty. Because that means nothing else can move now. And of course I would have told my dispatcher about that. Yeah, it's actually interesting that I bottle the air in game, Chris, because um, in reality, when I'm working on the preserve railway I do it on, never do. I'll let that get just a little bit quick, so that'll go wandering off up the track there somewhere. That's fine. It's not going to hit anything. Yes, that is the next train's problem. And naturally, of course, I would have told my dispatcher about that. Actually, what I'm going to do, let's just leave him stopping. And that looks like we've got no airflow, so good. Just put him in notch one. And I'll try and remember to keep a little bit of an eye on that because if it gets a bit quick, it's going to get exciting. I don't want exciting. No one wants exciting with trains. Look at those palm trees. Aren't they modelled magnificently? The other thing I'm going to be naughty about, Chris, is um, backing through a crossing. But that's okay. I'm sure in reality it happens all the time. So we need to couple up to this guy. Now, how's that train going? He is 23 miles an hour. That's just a little bit fast. A little bit fast. I am familiar with the K5LA. Believe it or not, we have them on trains here. Why did my HUD change again? Why is my HUD refusing to change back? There we go. Actually, you did see a little bit of stress on my couplers there. Just a little bit. Because I stopped so quick. But that's okay. 
I want that one. Now, before we move him again, even though he's just sitting there now, I'm going to come and check all of these. So those cocks are both open, which is fine. They are both open. It's not uncommon to find ones in the middle of the train which are closed. Now there's this guy. And now he's open, so we'll have to remember that when we come back. So we can couple them up. You can't actually control them until you have coupled them. So before we put the air through, we have to go back and close that. Just want a little bit of move. This is on a hill. Three mile an hour will be fine. Ah, uh, yes, there are power switches and... This is not a good time to do this because we're doing coupling up, but it's going slow enough. You actually change them on the dispatch screen, so you can change the switch anywhere you want. So that's just changing that one, and we can then change that signal, and if that train's going that way, it would leave. So yes, you can be dispatcher and do those things all you want, which is kind of cool. So that has coupled up now, but remember that we have to go and close that cock because if we put the air through now the train will just go into emergency so we can close this one now and go closed and now that we're actually coupled the other thing I can do is release my handbrake and go inside the car because you can this one we can release this handbrake I so they move a little bit when you release the handbrake. They're not on much of a slope here, so they don't go very far. So that's basically just the springs pushing it out that far. All because I don't actually have any brakes on. Might help a little bit too. So this is our this one. This is our cock that's closed. So we'll partially open that and watch our air movement. See how it's going through the roof. And that's back down in the 20s now, so I can open it up. And did we do the handbrake on this one? We did. Good. So now we can come down here. I've only got the independence on, so in theory these brakes should be happily releasing now. And we'll come and get these next two cars. Just get rid of that HUD. A little bit of power. I don't think the brake pistons are even there, actually. Can you even... I don't even know if you can crouch. Let me have a look at my key map. Is there anything for crouch? No. So you can't even crouch and look under there, but no, I don't think the brake cylinders are even there, let alone modelled. But let's uh, knock his handbrake off. Come to this one. Close the cock and we will knock off the handbrake. And stand out of the way so it doesn't hit you in the face. Partially open. No, no brake shoes either. When I'm um, shunting and I have a new trainee safe worker with me, on the preserve railway I'm on. You always warn them and say, when you release the handbrake on a car, because ours are manual windy wheels down quite low near the couplers, when you release the brakes on a car, they move. And they all go, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 I understand, no problem. And then about five minutes later, 
They release the handbrake, their first car ever, and it invariably hits them in the face. Because trainee talk, yeah, 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 doesn't really mean yeah, yeah, yeah. It means, yeah, can we just get on with this? I'm bored now. I want you to stop talking. It's a fair bit, a bit too much. Just in time. I was also being very naughty there, stopping with the independence, but that's okay. A little too quick. A little too quick is right. But I didn't break anything, because it would have told me. You'll get away with it up to about five, six mile an hour most of the time. Closed and take its handbrake off. Most of the time you'll get away with it. Every now and again you'll break one. Yeah, it is kind of funny. Our, our um, carriages, because it's narrow gauge, our, our, our carriages are 24 feet long and they are so about 7 metres or so. And they only weigh, ranging seven tons up to about 12 tons is the heaviest. So people don't don't really think that it's a real train because it's so little. It's very much a real train. It really hurts if it hits you. All right. So we've got all those put together and we are picking up from here, just checking. We are picking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars. So there's three, four, five, six, and seven. So I'm just checking because I want to know where to uncouple from. So six is the first one that we're going to leave here, I think. Yeah. So I'll be looking for patterns, orange, white, orange. Now it is the only one that's like that, orange, white, orange. And that's where our brake pattern is because we need to go and take these cars out of here now and put them up ahead and we're rolling a little bit Chris has just said, if I was to do a customer like this in real life, I would bleed off the air brakes from all the cars and just make one joint after another. That way it's all together. And then I would cut them in. Oh, here's our spammer again. Let's just uh, move the, put them in timeout. Oh, that's good. You put them in timeout, it deletes the message. Turn the game up a little. I do like the sounds that the carriages make. Hello, Steve.
that big clank then is because I had notched down a little too much and notched up again while it was moving and you can hear that force going through the train. I think Steve you can only bleed off the air once you're coupled to the car. Come on, give me about another 10 feet. God. Sigh. You know, this is where you break couples. Because I start rolling backwards. I had to stop myself then because I was in TSW mode where I'd started rolling backwards and thought I'll just deploy power and get my way out of that. But no, in this game, that's a bad idea. Let's let that settle down. I wonder if I can ride this one. Let's see. This is where I've got to keep an eye on my speed because I'm on a gradient. Sounds like you're a run eight player, Steve. So if I get anything wrong, please feel free to correct me because I don't play it all the time. In fact, I hadn't actually picked it up since I rebuilt this computer about four months ago. I had to get a new key. That's one thing I will actually say. The, the guy that runs Highball, his support is excellent. Really, really good. If you have any issues at all, you can um, get in touch with them via the website and they're very happy to help. I shouldn't say they, I think it is him. <laughs> this one guy. Um, getting new keys and stuff like that, it, it does have um, rights management getting a new key just explain what you've done that you've put in a new motherboard or whatever and straight away they just send you another one they know what you've bought and they're really cool about that Thank you. 
was a little bit early on the start of that sequence. That's okay. We'll just pretend I did it right and move on. Rose is a little bit of a challenge. Actually, I have to say one of the things in the end of year stream that absolutely am amazed me was that um, a Rosa, I'm pretty sure I left this cock closed, a Rosa's in the top 10 routes. Closed, yep did leave this bottled up. Because I left it bottled up, there's no air movement at all, so I should be able to just go fuck. And we should be all good. Or did I not open that one? Ah, that was our problem. Okay. Partially open. That's yeah, fine. Still got air. Okay. Actually, why did I take those handbrakes off? That was silly, because we're actually leaving these here. Still. So, handbrakes on. Handbrake on. You can apply that handbrakes on the entire consist with one key if you want to. Now, that's four, so that should be fine. Should be enough to hold it. We're going to leave it blocking a crossing, because of course we like that. Bit naughty, but that's okay. So here's where we're going to make our break. So we're going to close that one. And just for you guys, I'm going to leave that one open. Just so we get rid of the air this time and I don't bottle it because yes it was naughty. So David, you're playing a Rosa as well. And hello Jonah. No, there's not a lot of traffic waiting. Quite right there. It's not generally an issue in this game, traffic. You certainly do get to see it, but... Not all the time. Yeah, the only thing I wish they would fix on a Rosa from a drivability perspective the bounciness of the throttle bothers me still. It's better, but it's still there. I'd love to uh, have that addressed. And the other thing I'd really love to have the addressed, and I know um, I know they did because I had a conversation with Jasper. So I don't think I'm revealing any secrets that I am actually in the beta. Of TSW. I'm allowed to say I'm in the beta, I'm just not allowed to tell you anything about the beta. Um, I had a conversation with Jasper about that particular sounds of the carriages and they agree they're not good and they did actually attempt to do something about it in this release. They made it a lot quieter, which I certainly appreciate, but I think it could have been better. I think it could still be quieter, quieter still. All right, so let's jump on here. Isn't it nice? Maintain three points of contact at all times. Remember, safety first. So that's one foot, one arm on your ass, right?
<laughs> One of the things I absolutely love watching is a um, a safety video from Santa Fe Railroad which is basically yard and shunting safety and there's there's two particular ones that I really like uh, one of them is a very very serious video and it, it's all about how you should do everything and it gives you examples of how you should do everything and they actually crash a train in it as part of their examples and they have a I think it's a box car which is sitting up on jacks but because they haven't put wood between the metal jacks and the car the, it slides off the jacks and they actually do it and I'm thinking yeah I couldn't imagine a railway today actually doing that. Just to prove it and show you in a, a film. And the other one that's quite cool is a, uh, a guy who, who dies through no fault of his own and heads off to purgatory. And his job is to, to get out of purgatory, is to go back to the railway and hurt and kill people, basically. And it's just... Uh, very interesting way to, to push the safety message. Here's a question for you, Chris. Given that there's a train set blocking this crossing, would you actually bother with the, um, the four-toot sequence? again so you don't do it when you're propelling cars I assume someone must flag it kind of horn action we give on most crossings in our railway. That's about it. You'll hear more than that in the country, but not in the suburbs. to know. So Chris says someone will be riding the car like I am. They'll either see the traffic is stopped or they'll stop and flag it. This should all fit. So we're leaving. How many cars are we leaving here? Five. Now the order's important here for keeping this covered hopper. Oops. So we will now close that one, leave that one open, gonna put its handbrake on. Put this one's handbrake on, and we're gonna leave that open as well. Put this one's handbrake on. I'm only putting them all on because we're on a slope. I don't actually know what the North American practice is with handbrakes, but I know our railway, if we're on flat ground, we put on the first one, first two and the last two. 
and if we're on a slope we put them all on yeah that's true american trains are big so chris says when you're shoving over a crossing the engines might be 50 cars away no point sounding the horn if you're that far away now the last thing we did so we closed that cock up the other end so we're going to open this one and dump the air probably would have taken a bit longer than that to dump the air in reality but that's okay now if you do that after you've uncoupled you can't and then if you're being really pedantic you'd recouple so that you actually can do that now hopefully we can we can't open this coupler because we're yellow so we'll put a little bit of a little bit of push on it just a tiny bit now we can All the way up here now. I avoid spearing myself on the crossing. Now I could actually go back through that crossover, but I'm just going to bring it up here and use the one I've been using. Because I'm going to need this one to be set correctly anyway. haven't been watching my speed there and we're doing nearly 30 miles an hour a little bit quick now sitting here is we've just done king pack potato we're about to do progressive farms which is the next siding and we are not dropping anything off for progressive farms, so we only have to pick up these cars. Cool, we should go and do that. Now what I might just do, uh, actually no, I won't do it. What I, was, what I was thinking is I might go and put this car back on the set, but then it'll be in the middle and that would be even different. Yeah, so that's similar to us, flat train, flat terrain three or four brakes we we put on two we also padlock our handbrakes because um, our trains sit by themselves a lot i imagine they do it in here as well but we have had issues with the public rolling stuff away so we padlock them all so this is set for that inner siding which is fine this one is fine now as you probably noticed we've only just done our first pickup and set out and we have been running for yeah, near enough to an hour and a half so this takes quite a long time Thanks, Steve. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I shall uh, see you on another one, I hope. be uh, a challenge having to put on 130 handbrakes that would take a little while the most I would ever have to do is 40 would be the most I ever have to do with all of our car sets it's unusual for me these days to actually touch the carriages because I more often than not work on the footplate but there are days 
So if I do one of the midweek undergear inspection trains, for example, um, normally when we come back, there's shunting to do. And normally it's just the driver and the second person. All right, so let's go and ride this one. It'll let me, it will. pushing um, the powers that be at our railway to train more diesel only drivers because the only path onto the diesel as a driver is to come through steam and that means five to ten years as a fireman and then onto the, the driver training which takes a couple of years and then get onto the plate there and then you can re-qualify on the diesels but there is no path if you are a diesel second person to actually get on the footplate as a driver, unfortunately. It'd be really cool to change that. Doesn't mean I don't get to drive, I do occasionally, it depends who my driver is. It's usually the really old ones that have done 25,000 trips over their lifetime and they're quite happy to let someone else have a go and, and teach them. Those ones tend to give you a drive. They start by giving you a drive uphill where it's hard to screw it up. And then gradually, once they think that you've started to learn the, the brake, which is not a science, which is an art, they'll let you have a go downhill. Two. Set at this end, it's probably open, it is. So we will close that and we'll take off the handbrake while we're here. These two are both arms. I have occasionally found them where there's angle cocks that are closed in the middle of the train. Let's take the handbrake off. That's an interesting question, Chris. I can't say I've ever noticed. So I'm not going to say no, but I'm not going to say yes either. All right. Pull that ahead. certainly prevalent in this game probably because we're standing next to them a lot now because this is multiplayer one of the cool things you can actually do with multiplayer is I could have someone else driving the train or someone else doing the job that I'm doing on the ground so you can have multiple people just working a train like this which is a lot of fun
imagine being the guy on the ground in the Central Valley in California is not that much fun because the weather's just a little bit warm. A bit like it was here yesterday. Quite normal there. make it this time. That's so close. This is so short I'll get away with using power without stopping it. That's another thing, um, unlike TSW2, you do what you do in reality, you would just clear the point blades. don't need to go 20 miles down the track just to uh, clear a set of points like you do at TSW2. I understand why the game works that way. I understand their limitations. It's because they're using signalling blocks to work out where you are because they're using train occupancy detection essentially. So I get it. I don't like it, but I get it. Yeah, very quiet there today, Michael. Oh, I'm still here. Yeah, everything's slow and steady in this game, but while you're waiting for these cars to come down, you can be looking at your map, you can be looking at your switch list, you can work out where you're going next. Yeah, they do hold your hand a lot. It was something I, I caught myself doing in um, Train Simulator when I started making scenarios. I kept putting in pop-ups that told people what to do, and then I'm thinking, well, okay, I'm, a beginning player might need all these pop-ups and things, but a seasoned player is just going to get shitty with it. So I've been minimising them in uh, later things. Come on, just sneak it in. Come on, clack. Alright. Hand back off. They are both closed. They are both closed. They are both closed. Uh, how many cars are we actually picking up from here? That's right. This would be all of them. Seven. Perfectly okay to digress. Closed. You really kick yourself when you forget to close one. It does happen. And like any train things, it helps if you build a routine, which I'm now taking handbrakes off at the opposite end, so I shouldn't talk about building routines. I've done that one. That's released. That's applied. Well, it was released at the other end, but that's okay. I think this is where we were up to, so these should be released. Just check them and make sure in case I forgot, but they should all be released. Yeah, good. Let's train driver for a little while then. driver sits there looking, or in the US, the engineer, 
Since so they're looking at the little light that says PCS open going, you bastard. Now we have to wait. Because I'm not sure how many people who are watching the stream are involved in, in real railways, but uh, once you dump the air out completely, you're in for a little bit of a wait on a longish train. That's something I really like about Sherman Hill, actually. I, I know that there's been some streamers whinging about it, but I love that it takes 10 minutes to pump up a train, I reckon. That's actually awesome. What I don't love is when you come into a train, either in a service in a scenario, and you're sitting at a red signal out on the main line, which changes green as you come into it, that you have to pump up the train then, because they would not have dumped all the air out at that point. That's just wrong. But that's okay. It's one of those maintaining sanity things. You say your piece and walk away. you to think the driver constantly looking backwards at the back of the train is not realistic I can assure you it is looked ahead the way's clear road's set if anything gets in the way it's their fault that looks like the last car is about clearing that siding now so let's just pop down the back and have a look Put our set together now. It's just going to make it like that. Well, it's going to roll back on top of it. That was close. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately, there are not working mirrors. Here we go, just rolling away now. We're not even in reverse. <laughs> just a little. Well, at least it didn't derail. Run back down here to my set. I'm just leaving that rolling, which isn't particularly realistic. It is picking up speed, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Ideally, I would just ride the set down here, but, you know. Now, how are these set? These are still set for this, so we need to realign this. Which is the main reason I ran, rather than riding the car. And these two are still aligned properly, which is no great surprise, because one thing you'll find in Run 8 is that, unless you're playing in multiplayer, there's no part of the game that screws with the points. They just are what they are. I shouldn't say no, they're not working mirrors, but I don't think they are. I don't think working mirrors would fit with the uh, level of reality in this graphics. Uh, if you trail through a switch that's not lined for you, nothing much happens. It just lets it go. If you... Um, if you then pull, pull over that switch... You will derail. Probably because you bent the point blades. Does the game have weather? Yes, it does. Can't remember if you can do it in here or not. 
Starlight. Yeah, I can't actually remember how you turn it on. I thought it was in here. But maybe not. But yes, it definitely does have weather. But this is California, don't forget, so this is their weather. <laughs> this is it. All you get. It's either this or it's pissing down with the rain. Yeah, bending point blades is a bastard. Once in my uh, career on the Preserve Railway, I've hand signaled a guy through a set of points that weren't set for him, but fortunately he was smarter than me and said no. Alright. Now we did in fact let all the air out of this one. So we'll come all the way down here. You also applied the brakes too. Yeah. Just thinking actually. I'm actually gonna leave it alone. And I'm gonna leave those brakes applied. Now I have to remember. So we had that one plus picked up seven, didn't we? Should have actually had a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We did pick up seven, so it's that one. It's hard to tell this angle what the cars are. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that should be the point where our angle clock is closed. And it is. So we'll just leave him for the moment and come up to the locomotive. Gonna have to remember that angle clock's going to be wrong in the middle of my train. So I have to do it this way or I'm going to do bad things. Because we're gonna run around our train now. So I'm gonna close that. Put on two handbrakes, I'm gonna leave that one open. open and put on a handbrake. I'm going to leave these ones alone. And then back down here I've got to open up that ankle cock and let that air escape. Not that one. That one? Not that one. That one. Ah, found it. Alright, I'm just going to whack that open because it's not connected to the locos anymore, so it won't matter. So we've got a few brakes on at either end. We've got some brakes on in the middle that we'll have to deal with and check them all, but, you know, it's part of the process anyway. And I should... Just release this. Coupler. Drive away. Helps you can take the brakes off. Good. Just stop in there. way to the end of this town to run around now. Yeah, 
Uh, Z Freak, yes, I have tried the Searchlight Simulations AC4400 CW. I found it a little bit annoying, to be honest. I can't really remember why. There's something about it I didn't like very much. Certainly amazed at what they can do in Train Simulator. TS, if people watching aren't aware, is um, it has its heritage in the original Microsoft Train Simulator, which is the original Kuju engine. And it's certainly had a lot of work to it done since then, so it is essentially 20 years old. And I'm amazed at what Searchlight and some of the other people recently have been able to make that really old engine actually do. It's quite impressive. to be closer to these points. Now if I was playing on one of the multiplayer servers, at this point I would be contacting the dispatcher and asking for permission to come out onto the main line and to block the main line for a while. And I would have to sit here and wait until I actually had that permission. can control points from inside the cab but to be honest I just prefer this I do have to keep in the back of my head that down the other end of this town, the points are set for the loop, not for the main line. I don't really want to run through them.
Brian. I'm Brian. I'm Brian. And if you don't know where those quotes come from, well, you haven't watched enough really bad English comedy. Soon we should be passing my train. <laughs> yes, that's not proper radio communication at all. I was kind of sad when we got digital radios on the railway operate on because now they know who's calling because they know what vehicle you're in and by the assignments they know who you are and who you are. We used to have a lot more fun on the radio when they didn't know who we were. We shall see. Not far enough, in fact. That's fine. Yeah, our old analog radios, whenever you finished a conversation and they timed out, would go bing. So it wasn't that unusual to do silly English comedy things like and today's message is brought to you by the machine that goes bing yes and definitely no more shenanigans I think the funniest thing I ever had on radio is we run night trains and they um, stop at a restaurant out in the middle of nowhere and then we take the train further down the line and do the run around and set it up for the trip back before we head back to the restaurant to have our meal and then get the people on and take them home and just one night while really bored sitting in the train I went so is there anybody out there and got back a well actually yes there is but okay on the analog radios, not only could they listen to us, they could talk to us if they weren't on the railway. Digital's not so much. Because they need more than the frequency, they need the encryption key. side to the digital radios though if you need to tell someone about something that's not quite good or if you need to um, express some disappointment perhaps at something that someone's just done you can call them up directly so the whole railway doesn't get to hear it anymore I 
also good if you're in the middle of radio shunting in a yard that um, you can establish a connection between the ground and the, the loco and keep that connection. As long as you talk often enough it won't time out and die. to maintain a steady speed on a slope with a notch throttle. Almost tempted to use my brakes to do it. Close enough that the guy doesn't have to. Walk. So you know what? I might be able to do it because I don't know the train. I forgot to take that off. I'm going to have to couple up with it there. That's okay. Should have taken that off before. Oh, look, my happy hut's changed again. But you can't take it off now? No. You can't interact with a train that's not yours. Before I open anything, I have to go through my train. Actually, I can't take that. I'll do that. Oops. I'll break the list. It won't go anywhere now. I've got independent set on full. So we can release that. Now, the other way to do this is uh, I think it's. There you go. I've just set all the brakes all the way through. It's all good now. You can press the F7 key. Notice on my hut up on the left there, air brake system recharged, ankle cocks reset, normal operation, and cocks automatically set, handbrakes released. them on. Now I can go back to my engineer view and 
should have. End of train okay. Excellent. All right. Yes, it does get a little bit confused when you do the auto brake. It gets just a little bit confused. Normally I would actually walk through and set them all because it's part of the fun, but I'm just bearing in mind how long this stream's already run and we're only halfway through doing this. We've got two more stops to make. Or is it three? We have got... We've got one... We've got two pickups to make and two setouts to make. And one of the setouts and pickups is at the same place. So right now we're pushing through all the way through here and we're going to push out onto the main line again. And we have to go through that crossing because we're going to switch onto the north track. And then I'm going to be really mean because I'm just going to block the north track constantly while I do the rest of this. There are some sidings I could use, but CBF. Now there's something that TSW is missing. TSW we get head sway. So your locomotive moves. But look at this next one up. It moves. It only happens on shitty track in yards like this. It's good, it's a nice touch. onto the main line up the other end now. Might even go up there and have a look. And it dumped me on the ground. That's nice of it. But yes, in fact we are coming out. It's going to be coming out shortly. So I'm going to go up here and watch. Be very exciting. So, watchers, you're willing to hang on while we finish this or do you want me to end it at this point because um you've seen most of what run 8 actually has to offer only a bronze only a bronze Up medal well at least you got down the hill you didn't launch it into space or anything that's good. Actually, while I'm waiting, train. Let's just go and line these. Not that you'd run around crossing the tracks in front of your train or anything. No, you'd never do that. That'd be a bad thing to do. I think um, a rose has probably got the harder metals. I've not seen anything said about it, but I, I've noticed. Um, yeah, I could pop over to the other side of the world and we could look at some Amtrak. We can certainly do that. Let me get this onto the north track and 
start it moving and then we'll go relinquish train and it'll just disappear. It'll drive off all by itself. And we can go look at Amtrak. Finishing this is just more of this, basically. Yeah, I think that the, lately the timetables have been getting better. And I think the metal system's gotten a little bit harder. You don't automatically get a gold anymore just because you got to the other end. And I appreciate that. If you're interested in Run 8, um, your graphics hardware doesn't matter. Potato's fine. Hello, Chicago's Rower Epidography. Yeah, so, Run 8 looks like this. Um, I used to run it on a 1060 card, and it was like this. And I'm running it on a 3080 Ti, and it's like this. It doesn't actually change at all. Give the non-existent traffic a chance to go through there and we'll go and set this train on its way and then we'll go find some Amtrak to play with. Assuming I can actually remember how to do it. Let's put you forward, take your brakes off just to give you the subtle hint. AI recrew and watch it think about it, figure it out for a little while and then it should probably leave. going through the process. He's turned his lights on. Forget that switch. Good point, Michael. Did you notice something about the AI? The spitting is the automatic drain valves on the air. It just stops water accumulating. Yeah, it blew the horn. He did blow the horn. And they do that everywhere. All crossings, everywhere they should blow the horn. That's something I'd love to see in Train Simulator. Which makes you wonder, if it can be done here, why can't DPG do it? Uh, because they're busy doing other stuff would be my suggestion. <laughs> but yeah, they could, of course they could do it. You can program anything. It's just not on their priority lists. You know what I don't know? That I'd be curious to find out? If I can go fast enough to actually get anywhere near this guy, because he's taken off quite a little bit of a rocket. The first place that this one has to shunt... You can't fly in this game, but you can run through stuff. Um, the first place this one has to shunt is just up here. I'm actually really curious if he does. Because I've never paid attention to whether the AI just drives or the AI follows instructions. I don't think he's going to. I think he's going too fast. I think he's just going to drive away. In fact, he's, he's notching up. Look at the exhaust. I love the way this track goes around the signal. Nah, 
he's out of here. Because the next the next drop off is just here. This side and coming up. No, he's definitely out of here. He's not going to follow instructions. Bye bye. All right then, go back to the main menu and change regions. We want to go to New York. Uh, let's go to Selkirk Terminal. I'm going to have to do one, aren't I? Amtrak Hudson M1. That sounds vaguely promising. Let's launch that. That sounds normal, isn't it? Chicago's railway photography. Amtrak's definition of on time is within a week. So we have got, oops, sorry, our little general electric locomotive. <laughs> and we have some Amfleet cars. Uh, I, I don't actually know enough about these to tell you whether they're Amfleet 1 or Amfleet 2. I couldn't tell you, but I have both in the DLCs. Um, if you don't, let me just get rid of these car tags because they're going to annoy me. Um, oh, that's something I forgot to show you. You can turn on the destination so you can make it even more cheeky when you're doing shunting. I prefer to use my switch lists, personally. Uh, let's just get rid of the tags completely. I don't know how I turned on destination tags. Ah, got it. Okay. Every key on the keyboard does something. Some of them do six things. One of them does eight things. All right, so let's... Oops, I need to be a little bit further back for this. Start it up. And then let's get in. Hey, Brian, you out there? Oh, Brian's back. He's changed coasts. Now, this is the control set that the rail driver was made for. Ah, that looks happy enough. Uh, and now that it's not freight, we do what all passenger drivers do, notch it straight up. Have I actually got some quick maps printed out? That's the question. I know where I am. Don't think I've got them printed out. I've only got the Western stuff printed. Don't usually use the maps for Amtrak, they just drive. You want more power, Chris? All right, give it the rest. I'm trying to get my external dispatcher to pop up, but it doesn't want to. Yes, there are. They won't let you screw it up, Chicago's Railroad Photography. You're quite right. That looks remarkably like a red signal to me. Between one who goes That's annoying. One Six, five, oh. Look at that. Yep. 
Well, that's pretty much all the brakes. So is it going to stop or am I going to have to go into emergency? No, it's going to go through the red signal anyway. Oh, we're going to bad. Yep, straight through it. But guess what? Run 8 doesn't actually care. <laughs> exactly that, Chris. Nothing really. Uh, what I will do is bring up my dispatcher and find out why that was red, though. Chicago's railway stockholders. Why does he have to apply throttle and then close the generator field? No, even the emergency brake's not enough, mate. <laughs> I'm going to kill the external dispatcher because I think it got sad when I um, did what I did then, and I don't have a bloody shortcut for it. Oh, that's okay. Yep, Let's open uh, a Windows thing and I'll go find they it. They haven't gone back to me to tell me it's not the fact that we got a guy comply with still guys up. Yep. And where's run eight? There's run eight. External dispatcher. Start it up again. I think it got confused when I changed um, routes. So it's connecting away at the moment. Where are we? We are... We were on Hudson. So we, we were here. And we've just run through this red signal here. So I've been naughty. So we'll just change it to... I can't do it because it's a train on top of it. There we go. Let's change it to green. It's all good. No problems at all. Where are we physically? We should be right on top of that crossing. Because I think it wanted me to go on the other track, Thank probably. But that's okay. We're not going to. So if I do right click, come on. Can't I do this? It's not letting me. Fine. We'll just have to set all the signals, won't we? Do them manually, because it won't let me fleet them. That's okay. I'll bring that over here so I can see the chat again. So apply power, then close the generator field. Do you know if you did that, you'd probably just blow your fuse in the locomotive. That would be a very bad thing to do. Oh yeah, it's passenger train, not Jake. Yeah, so I think that would be a remarkably bad thing to do, Chicago's railroad photography. Applying power and then closing the generator field. I, I really think it would just go bang. If you were lucky, it would just blow the main fuse for the for the locomotive. And you'd be able to put another one in. And you wouldn't have to call someone and go, Broke the train. And already we're going to braking, because we're supposed to be stopping just around this corner. Stopping in run eight's like reality. It's a bastard. Some of these things you can interact with, but the graphics don't do anything. Wait till you see what the passengers do.
There you go, passengers. Get on. Oh, wait, you don't. You don't actually move, do you? You don't do anything. Now, interestingly, in this game, the wheels do go round, unlike TSW. But you notice they're not quite round. Be a bit lumpy. Bang, 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 bang. Should we go say hello to our passengers? Why not? Your train's there, mate. There. Over there. Go on. Go on. Oh, serial killer. So, face variety, we appear to have three. Interesting. Oh. Let's just leave then. They're not going to get on. Straight into notch eight. And eventually it will actually move. There it goes. You can stay off right there. Yeah, it's probably getting close enough to just go on down to it. We'll give it some hold up. It's a very strange thing to do. What loco was it in? Just setting up some points. We're going to come into this station. We'll come into platform one. Seems fair. Actually, let's go in. Just so you can see you're doing it, so I'm changing this crossover now, so I've now reversed this crossover into here and we'll stop in the main on the main. FP40. Pretty sure I've got an instruction manual for an FP40. I'll have a look. Won't do it now. I'd have to go and find it. So I might as well bring this back over here. Just make it smaller. Just make it a bit little. So it won't be all that readable, but you can see our. So we're going to put it where it's not too annoying. Uh, no, that's under my head. That's no good. Let's put it up there. So that's us. And there's no other trains anywhere on this network at the moment. I guess every operator comes up with their own weirdness, don't they? Normally if they haven't got the gen field on and they're in notch one, it's just that they want to rev the diesel up a little bit to run the air compressor faster to pump up the train. That's why you normally do it. So the high speed graphics for Run 8 that you're watching now, I'd kind of put them on a par with the original Microsoft Train Simulator to be honest with you. Because this is as good as it gets. And judging by the lack of heat coming out of my machine, the GPU is not doing have a look and see what the GPU is doing. Yeah, a little bit. Not much. 
when TSW is running this thing, this sits on about 85 degrees. So it is using the GPU, but just not much. Oh, we're speeding. Look, plus 14. That means I'm going too fast. Excuse me. You're talking too much. to be fly camera but obviously not I wonder if they do it Chris because they they start making sure it's not making amps and they probably still got the brakes on and then they flip it on to make sure it does start making amps before they accept the locomotive signal Knowledge didn't blow the horn. Naughty. No yep, they have active defect detectors. We talked about earlier in the stream. I've never had one give me a fault, but I know they do. So it's a rare thing. I know when you're playing dispatcher on multiplayer, you can tell the dispatch, tell the defect, defect detector to give someone a fault and watch them handle it. One thing I always struggle with is which way are they facing. Right, 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 right. So if he's facing that way, he'll start moving. But he's not facing that way. He should be on that track though. Now, awkward. Let's see if he wants to go the other way. No, it is moving. It's starting to go. amusement value. Switch him. Let well, him come all the way down to there. Go back to 
our train, which is here, still cruising along. That's an interesting question, Chris. I'll have to try that sometime. Treated as dragging equipment. Well, it should get a hot box. So you, sh you should end up with hot wheels. So this is pretty much Amtrak in the game, Chris. It's like Amtrak in reality. You just go somewhere. Hopefully if you've got a handbrake on, the wheel's actually turning and you're not making a flat spot on it. That's always embarrassing. No one wants to be in I broke the train territory. Yeah, so coming in to here, you can see how I'm green. And then my path changes yellow and finally red. So this signal, even though it's showing green, actually won't be. It'll be a, a diverging indication. It's probably a caution. The dispatch map's not very clever when it comes to signals. You just set them to go or stop. But the signaling system knows a bit more than that. See, I, I make comments about the water in Transim World. How good's this water? Brilliant. This game has got any other kind of detector. I think it's only got the, the defect detector. So they've probably taken the simpler approach. If you get the A-Line, the um, Florida download pack for uh, this game, when you're near water, these little alligators on the side of the track sometimes. So we're not too far off now. This is why I was going to make a living out of trains. Obviously going uphill because my uh, speedo is showing that I will be dropping speed. Just give it a notch. Um, if I was going to make a living out of driving trains, I suspect it would be suburban stuff. On the main track, switch out on your radio. I 
went from my eldest upstairs there, if you heard him. So we've still got a green on the next one. And a very big bridge. actually have to bail off the independent brakes when you're applying the main auto brake or the train brake but it's a good idea to do it because you will maintain the stretch on your couplers so that your cars don't slam together and then bounce off each other and that could do bad things to the load maintaining coupler stretch is just better train handling Otherwise, when you start off, when you heard it when we were doing the shunting before, you hear this bonk, 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 bonk all the way down the train as you pull the couplers out. You need route knowledge with Run 8. You notice there's no speed signs or anything. You're just supposed to know. The only way you can find out is watch the dispatch screen and if you start going too fast, you can see it up there. Now, Train Sim World 2 is I know they use the word simulator and it's pretty close to being a simulator but it is also a game because they have to be able to attract people people who want to play mostly they're going to be people that know something about trains or they probably wouldn't have searched for train in, in whatever store they use probably wouldn't have thought it looked all that interesting if they didn't know about something about trains. But if they're not, and they know nothing, then uh, if it's too much like a simulator like Run 8 is, I've seen people pick up Run 8 on streams and not be able to make the train move. If it's too much simulator and not enough game, it's frustrating. And if it's... Um, I like that crossing with no road. Probably it, Zufreak. I think you're probably right there. Simcade. I kind of like that name. Whereas this one's more simulator. This is more for dedicated railway people. I have to zoom in to see the signals if you're wondering. They don't have any kind of light bloom on the signals. So we'll 
get this into this station that we're headed to. At least we're on the right board now. And once we get in there and, and pull up, we'll um, call it quits for the day. Now, to make Run 8 interesting, this particular scenario that I loaded, they're called scenarios, but they're not really, not in the TSW or TS sense. It's just a train and you run it. To make Run 8 really interesting, what I generally do is um, I run my train and I run the dispatch board and I spawn lots and lots of trains onto the dispatch board so that I've got lots of things to do. So while it's just cruising along like this and you're not really doing anything, you're running the other trains and the more stuff you put on there, the more stressful it gets. CSX train that has spawned. He's on the north track, so he probably wants to go this way. So he. Yeah, but that's half the fun. Yeah. You, you notice they, they copped out, by the way. They didn't actually model New York. See, that's where we spawned before. He goes to New York Penn Station. So they, they don't have any mechanics for tunnels, would be my bet. There we go. So we've got a, a yellow over green. So we need to start slowing down. Now, one other thing to just to be aware of is um, the signals that you see in the game. Yep, enjoy your dinner, Chris. Thanks for hanging around, and thanks for all the comments and questions. Um, you, the signals that you see on as you drive don't match one for one for the signals that are on the dispatch map. There are extra signals on the track. It's almost time for me to have lunch. This is probably one of the longest ones I've ever run, I think. I'm only getting away with it because my wife's at work today. Otherwise, by now, there would have been questions. Why are you going so well? What's going on? Understanding me, 47 by now, releasing track time starting number 7786 on the site. Between CP Solid and CP Lane 813, 813 AM. Road crossing. Sorry for all the zooming in and out. Thank you, Metro. I always have Another no road crossing. <laughs> no, most of them are like that on. Uh, east coast routes I think from memory they only model enough of it to be there for the train they don't care about the road whereas at least on the, the routes for the western side the person who makes them tends to put the roads in and there's road traffic too Another Russian spammer! Yay! Bye bye. Of course, just the same one. <laughs> yep, uh, they haven't gotten back to me to tell me it's not the fact that we gotta, gotta comply with it, still guys. That's a different name. see the signals that thing in the distance is actually a, a big bridge and much to my amazement given that they only do enough in the gameplay that's this thing up here the lab bridge um, it does actually go up and down sadly if you drive if it in the up position and you drive through it you just drive yeah, through the air. yeah the uh 305 I think this is our station down. coming up. No, it couldn't possibly be. We still have a yellow. 
red over yellow in fact. We're nowhere near the station yet, so this must be an little intermediate station that it doesn't even show on the map. No, no, it is our station. And I'm going lots too fast, so all the brakes. All the brakes, except the emergency brake. Oh, let's even do some independence as well. And just so I don't spad. We are going to stop. Alrighty then. That was my station. That was a bit deceptive because it didn't move from here for ages. Must mustn't be another section indicator until you get up here. That's cool. Alrighty. So I guess I'm getting popular enough to get Russian spammers, so that's always good. We can just keep their messages at bay, that's fine. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at run eight. And next week. I'll okay, just have a quick look at what next week is well, from my own website. And I'll just bring that up and then I'll drag it onto this screen. I think it's Mariah's Pass, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. Yes, because BNSF has now gone global. And uh, see you later, Chicago's Railroad Photography. We'll be running some BNSF. The NSF branded stuff on Mariah's Pass. And I even bought this. Because I wasn't sure if I could get it through the beta path. I didn't ask. Probably should. Um, but anyway. We'll play a bit of Mariah's Pass. And what I want to do is find a way to make long haul freight interesting. So I have that challenge between now and next week. <laughs> and then um, after that. We're going to jump back into Train Sim World 2 and do some Boston the week after. And then I um, don't have a crystal ball, but I expect sometime in the not too distant future um, the new German route will probably release. And no, the beta team do not get told when they are releasing. We have no idea. It just happens. Um, so don't bother asking me because I don't know. <laughs> I can't help you. So I would expect after that, probably sometime we'll run the new one. If not that, then we'll run something else. You're all exciting. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, folks. And um, if you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. Or it helps the channel out. Um, I've got 250-odd. You know what I didn't do? You know what I didn't do? I didn't talk about who the new subscribers are. Oh, no. Let me quickly get that list. Which you can really only get you on do the your phone. subscribers. Yes, I need to do my subscribers. I nearly forgot. What a bastard. And the only way to get a decent subscribers list is to actually look out on the phone and look at your notifications. So we have Matthias Koski, Charlie Foxtrot. Welcome to you both. And we have Andy71. Now, I wonder if this is the same person. We also have Andy7272. Okay. And we have Edward Vivenzio. And... And I think the others subscribed before that, but we had um, David Drives and Aiden Lane. I think they were the week before, though. Pretty sure. But anyway, all good. So, uh, welcome to the new subscribers. And if I can get up to 500, I can do posts. And when I can do posts, I can actually advertise upcoming streams, which will mean more people will be able to find me. Because before then, it's actually really hard to find you. So, um, yeah, we're going to do Mariah's Pass next week. Chicago's Railroad Photography. Um, I'd love to do it now. And I probably will actually do some play today because it's still kind of hot and muggy outside, so I'm not going out to do my outdoor chores because I couldn't be stuffed. 
So I'm going to be doing some Mariah's Pass because I want to find something interesting to do. Because just cruising along for hundreds of miles is not interesting. No matter how much you have to go into dynamic brakes. But anyway, that's my challenge. I'll figure it out. We'll have a we'll, we'll find a way. Maybe I put steam engines on Mariah's Pass. Ooh, that'd be interesting. BNSF locos and steam engines. Hmm. That could get really interesting. I'm sure you can do that in TS. Hmm. Thinking. Anyway, all good. So have fun, folks, and I will see you next week. Bye now. Welcome any and all feedback. Feel free to comment on the video. Constructive criticism is welcome, especially if I've got something wrong. I stream every Sunday morning starting at 8.30am, and I also do ad hoc streams from time to time during the week. Please subscribe and click notify to avoid missing out. Subscribing helps me by helping me see what content is good and how it helps the channel grow, or doesn't as the case may be.